In the last video, we were looking at this circuit and we were using the um, mesh, mesh technique with the format approach and we had determined so far what currents I1 and I2 are. Now you want to finish off the problem by determining what is current I3 and then look to see what is the current that flows through each one of these resistors. So we continue along I3 that is equal to we go back to the original determinant that we set up and this column of numbers which are coefficients of I3 is replaced with that column of numbers everything else stays the same so let's make some more room I3 will be equal to this stays the same, so we have 2 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 3 minus 1 and then we have this column of numbers 13 0 0 and is divided by 13 that was the numerical value of this 3 by 3 determinant. Okay now let's see we're going to expand this out using minors, so that will be equal to 2 times this 2 by 2 matrix that we get by covering this up and cover the column and the row up. Hopefully you can see it plainly and what we have is it looks like this is going to have a value of 0 because here we have 0 times 3 minus 0 times negative 1 so this is 0 then we have minus this number but that has a minus sign by it so that's plus 1 times this sub matrix and again or this sub determinant this 2 by 2 determinant right here hopefully you can see it negative 1 negative 1 0 0 this is going to have a value of 0 for this 2 by 2 determinant 0 times negative 1 is 0 minus 0 times negative 1 so this is 0 then we have plus 13 times this submatrix cover up the column, cover up the row, and we have negative 1, negative 1, 3, negative 1. So that's 0, that's 0, and the value of this 2 by 2 determinant we have 1 minus negative 3 or that's 1 plus positive 3 that has numerical value of 4 so I3 equals 13 times 4 divided by 13 4 amps so there is I3 So finally we have determined currents or the mesh currents we should say I1, I2 and I3 and no negative signs came up so the directions that we assume turned out to be correct after all. So I1 is 11 amps so here we have then 11 amps coming into the circuit like this. Now through here, through this resistor, we have 11 amps minus 5 amps. So we have 6 amps in that direction for that resistor. And 
And here for this resistor, again, 11 amps minus 4, that is 7 amps going in this direction. And for this resistor here, then, it's going to be 4 amps. in that direction. And for this resistor, it's going to be 5 amps going in this direction. So we can get rid of these now, except we want to remember here we have I3, 4 amps in this direction and we have 5 amps in this direction, so that's going to give us a net current of 1 amp in that direction. So there it is. Notice we had 11 amps coming into the current, and here we have 7 amps, and from here 4 amps, so we have 11 amps returning. So that's it. Finally, that's the entire circuit. And again, sorry if that was a little bit tedious, but for these types of problems, it's just simply the nature of working with them. Anyway, that wraps it up for this circuit. Um, come back, join us for some more videos, and let's see if we can solve some more problems.